Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to control the speed of an AC induction motor with squirrel cage using Solo. We're going to do the analog control and then digital control and then we're going to see the differences and how you can use our motion terminal in this tutorial. Please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to start doing the test first and then I'm going to explain you the details. First of all, this is the AC induction motor I was talking about. This is an AC induction motor with a squirrel cage and uh, it's pretty miniaturized version of an AC induction motor that you can find in the market. It has only three wires. It doesn't have any kinds of sensors on anything and that's the reason that we're going to do in this setup only the sensorless test. So I'm going to control the speed of this motor in a sensorless manner and I'm going to see how this behaves. I'm going to see how Solo can control it. First of all, in analog mode using only this type of wiring. And then I'm going to show you the same exact control using only the USB and digital control. So let's start it. To start it, I'm just going to turn on Solo. Before that, I'm sure that I've set the value of the power supply at 24 volts, which is the voltage of this motor. And when I turn on Solo, I see, okay, the the LED is blinking and I'm going to show you first what happens. I increase a little bit the magnetizing current and then I increase the speed and the motor starts to rotate. I keep increasing, it speeds up and I can speed it down. Also in low speed it's, a, it's resistive to my force that I'm applying so it's working in closed loop mode and I can also change the direction of rotation like this from one side to the other side very fast and without any problem. So let's see what I'm doing here. I'm going to show you the details of what's happening here. Okay, now we're going to see what did I do to control this motor and I'm going to explain you how you can do the exact same thing that I did here to control the speed of the AC induction motor in a sensorless manner. So. The very first thing you need to do is, first of all, we start from the beginning. I put all the piano switch pins off while the system is off. So you don't see any blinking or anything. This LED here is turned off. I have done the wiring. The wiring is pretty simple. I've done the simplest wiring only using potentiometers and a switch. You can use an Arduino instead of uh, these potentiometers. And instead of sending analog voltages, you can send PWM pulses. We've got a lot of post blogs in uh, regarding this type of control and you can check our website and you're going to find the Arduino examples. Okay, now to explain a little bit more, to control an AC induction motor solo operates in field oriented control. And once you're using field oriented control, one of the methods of controlling the speed of an induction motor is the one that solo is using, which it generates a field on the stator, a rotating field. And that field, the intensity of that field is controlled by this potentiometer, which is called the potentiometer in charge of the magnetizing current. So once this potentiometer is at zero, I'm going to have zero amps contributing in generation of the field. And once it's at maximum, I'm going to have 10 amps contributing in the magnetizing current and also finally generation of the field. So I can measure the value of the magnetizing current using this potentiometer and the other potentiometer is in charge of controlling the speed all the way from 0 to maximum speed which is 6000 rpm in this case in analog mode. And the final thing is this switch which I'm using for changing the direction of the rotation. To start the rotation, before doing anything, first of all, I select the type of the motor I'm using. The type of the motor I'm going to use now is AC induction motor obviously and to do that I have to put this pin down the pin number two and uh, once it's down it means that I have selected the AC induction motor after that I turn on the system once you turn it on you need to make sure that none of this potentiometer has a value okay once I push down the the pin number two to select the AC induction motor now is the time to go to the closed loop mode and I'm going to do the motor identification. So to do the motor identification, what you need to do is you need to push down this piano switch. There would be a little vibration in the motor. This motor is a pretty big motor, so 
you can't see any effect of the vibration but it's completely identified and the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go to a speed control mode because i'm going to control the speed of the ac induction motor so i have to push down this pin as well down the pin number four so now i'm in a speed control mode like any other controllers you need to tune the kp and ki so i have the kp and i have the ki what i'm going to do is this i'm going to first of all put them back up both at zero which is turning them in clockwise direction then i'm going to increase a little bit the kp just maybe like five degrees or something in counter clockwise direction and i'm going to increase a little bit ki maybe like one degrees or something much less than kp and i'm going to see the effect normally it, it's enough but i'm going to see the effect before increasing the speed you need to apply some sort of magnetizing current for this motor fortunately i had the data sheet so i could check that the magnetizing current of this motor can be anything between one amps to three amps so what i'm gonna do is this i'm gonna measure the voltage on the pf input of solo which is connected to this potentiometer and i'm gonna see how much is the voltage of the, the potentiometer so i'm gonna use my voltmeter to know the amount of the magnetizing current you can measure the voltage between the ground which is this pin and the pf p slash f input of solo which is connected to this potentiometer in charge of the generation of the magnetizing current and then based on that you can tune the amount of current now the voltage is zero so it's it means zero amps for magnetizing current i increase it i want two amps so i have to reach to around one volt i increase this potentiometer i reach to one volt when i reach to one volt it means that i'm gonna have two amps of magnetizing current because at five volt i'm gonna have 10 amps of magnetizing current so one volt means almost two amps of magnetizing current so after i know this i can increase the speed very easily i'm gonna increase the potentiometer of the speed you don't need to change the value of the magnetizing current anymore unless you want to have different performance in different speeds but for now i'm gonna only increase the speed potentiometer a little bit it's rotating i can start the rotation go to higher speeds and then coming back to lower speeds so also i can change the direction of rotation having the same behavior Maybe I need to increase a little bit the magnetizing current just to see what happens. So you see that when I increase the magnetizing current, I can go actually to lower speeds with better performance. Now I'm around like 50 RPM or 100 RPMs and it's easy to grab the shaft now. So I increase a little bit the magnetizing current. I'm going to measure it first. It's 0.4. So I reduce it actually. I increase it a little bit. I go to 1.5. Okay. So let's see the behavior now. Okay, it's much harder to grab the shaft because the magnetizing current is much more and the field is stronger. So you saw that the effect of the magnetizing current is in this condition. It's not always good to increase the magnetizing current to the maximum value because too much of the field might effect negatively because there is a saturation limit for the core and the stator so you can't increase it just randomly but it's nice to check it with different uh, speeds so i change the direction increase the speed okay great that's it it was simple and easy what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna do the exact same thing with only the usb cable in completely digital mode so i'm gonna totally unwire everything i'm gonna take all these wirings and instead i'm gonna use only the usb so let's see what happens okay now i've connected only the usb and that's it the only thing you need to do once you're using the digital mode is you need to make sure that at least one time you have identified your motor with 
pushing down this piano switch while the system is on. So if I leave the system in this configuration, because I've done the identification once before, it will work. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing I've done in analog mode, now in completely digital manner. So I've connected my USB to solo, and there is no other wire connected to it. And I'm gonna do everything I've done, including the speed control and all the settings here, using the action part in our motion terminal. So before everything, I need to make sure that I'm connected to solo. To do that, you need to click here. You need to select the, the USB that is associated to solo, with, which is normally a COM port. Then I select connect. And all this is considering that you have enabled the experimental web platform in Quorum or any other browser you're using, which is related to the serial API. So you need to make sure that that's enabled. And here I have enabled it using this command here. So I go back, I see that this plug is green. Now I have access to actions, and which is uh, decomposed out of two parts, configurations and controls. In configuration, you can find the settings that normally are one-time settings. And uh, for example, like current limit, number of poles and the others. And you see a little star here for some of these commands also in the control part. This is indicating that these values are gonna remain in the memory of Solo and they will be remembered after power recycling. So I'm gonna start from here. I'm gonna first deselect the type of the model I'm using. I'm using AC induction model. Once I selected it from the drop down menu, I need to click on the send and this button, it's gonna get green, which means everything went fine. And if I read back, I'm gonna see that, okay, it's set on AC induction models, which is fine. Now, the number of poles is eight. I don't want it, I want four, so I put four here. I send it again, it went fine. The current limit is too much for my motor. My motor at maximum will consume something around 10 amps, and I'm gonna put it there. You can also put float numbers like 10.1, it's not a problem. You set it and you read it back, now you read it, it's not exactly 10.1 because we are talking about the fixed point value and it has a resolution, but it's super close to the value I've set, which is fine. Here you can set the frequency of the switching at the output of solo, 20 kilohertz for my motor is fine. I'm not using encoders, so the encoder line doesn't matter. You can also do the motor identification here. You can do the reset factory and reset device status to zero. I'm not gonna use this. I have already identified my motor, but if you want to identify your motor from here, first you need to make sure that you go into digital mode and then running the motor identification. So I've selected the type of the motor. I go to the digital mode by setting this, and then I can run the motor identification. Once you run it, you're gonna see the exact same behavior once you press down the piano switch pin number five, which is exactly the same behavior, a little vibration in the motor. And once you do that, you will have some parameters which I'm gonna show you later. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna select what type of control you wanna do. You wanna do torque control, you wanna do position control or a speed control. In my case, I'm gonna do a speed control. So I select the speed control, I send the command, it went fine. And then you need to tune some parameters like the speed control KP, the speed controller KI, and then you need to select the type of the speed control. So. I start with the type of speed control. I'm gonna use the sensorless feature. So I select the default value and I send it. The motor direction, I prefer to start with counterclockwise. This totally depends on the wiring you do because in sensorless, it doesn't matter how you connect the wires. It only affects the direction of the rotation. And then after doing that, I need to set the speed controller gains for KP and KI. I have previously found the best values for my motor. So both at 001 and then here also these two values are fine you don't need to set the current controller kp and current controller ki because they are identified in the motor identification part so if i read them you're going to see that they already have a value but this doesn't mean that you can't change them you can actually change them if you want but it's not necessary because they are identified during the motor identification phase but if you like you can change them and then we are ready to go. To start the rotation of the motor, I need to set two parameters. I need to set the magnetizing current similar to the 
analog part and then I need to set the speed reference that I like to reach. So the magnetizing current for this motor we're gonna start with 1.8 amps and I'm gonna set it. Once you set it the last thing will be the speed reference. So I'm gonna go to 1000 rpms and I set and then the motor starts to rotate very nicely. You can now change the direction of the rotation if you like and the motor will change the direction of rotation. So this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You can stop the motor using this command. If I set this, the motor will stop. And then if I want to stop the whole thing in an emergency stop, I can press this button. Once you press this button, you need to recycle the power of solo because this is an emergency stop. This is meant to be for safety reasons and nothing else. So that's it. Finally, we tested everything. We tested the control of the speed of the induction motor in a totally analog mode with potentiometers and switches. And then we switched to the USB and we controlled everything. So I hope this could be useful. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to our channel and support us for growing better and better.